I'm Delta Work, and it's time for Very Delta. Lady Bunny is here, but first, do you want to see me go off? I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who finds au jus to be even more Very Delta when it's called gravy. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. Watch how I put my perfume on. Watch how I put my perfume on. Watch how I put my perfume. I want to talk about giving people the finger. I feel like there's ways to do it. People used to say, flip the bird. I don't really know where that comes from. I guess I could Google it. I'm not that interested just because that phrase seems weird to me. Give them the bird. Um, Or I've even heard people say, flick someone off. And I always say, flip them off. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was always flip. Maybe it was always flick. Maybe it was always flick. And I just said flip. And everybody else also just said flip. Whichever it is, I feel like you have to do it the most powerful way that you can, which is pulling your finger. I don't know what your dexterity is or how your muscles work, but my muscles work like this. This is, these are, these, I really work these out. I always have finger day. Um, I don't have leg day. I don't have arm day. I don't have chest day. I don't have back day. I have finger fuck day. And this is how I do it. Let me do that again for you. This is how I do it. I'm going to do it a couple of ways so I don't block my face. This is showbiz stuff, but like this. See that? Watch this. And you say, you do it like this. Hey, man. Hey. It's just like that. Like you got to do it like this. Now, some people want to flip someone off, and this is not the way to do it, is they get their thumb and they hold their ring finger and their index finger and they go like that. That is too weak. You can't, that means nothing. That's actually like blowing someone a kiss, a nice, sweet kiss, because there's no power behind that. There's no gumption. You don't go up to somebody and go, hey, fuck you. You go, hey, just like that. And you got to have some intention when you do it and you got to call them out hey see that but when you go like this hey fuck you like that's not nice now if you're super super like vintagey even you can do like sort of what i call like an 80s flipping someone off it's this people used to do that all the time hey they would go like that and i don't know really what that means like i it's see i think it's like flipping someone off but it's really with your whole body and you can't do that when you drive you can't because you have to keep your arm um you know here and you have to keep your hand on the steering wheel so you can do this one but you can't 
like let go of the steering wheel and do that. I can let go of the steering wheel actually and steer my steering wheel while putting hot sauce on a burrito. I can do that. Um, I mean, I push my seat all the way back. I need a lot of room. You know what I mean? I push my seat all the way back. So if you're ever in a car with me and you have to sit in the back seat, sit in the passenger back seat because I'm going to be pushed pretty far back. I'm not leaving no knee room unless I have to because I am always prepared to put salsa on a burrito, right? Just open it up and do that or to be able to if I really feel it and like the ancestors are coming through and I'm like, I've got to do the forearm fuck off. And that's the forearm fuck off, right? Like, like that. But there's another one you can do. And this is definitely regional. I don't want to say where because I'm not trying to, you know, but it's this one. It's like this. It's everything that involves this action without this one, but they all work together in the same motion. So it's this. And this is a variation of this. When you do this, you can't say, hey, you can't say that. You have to say this because you could do this and you could go, hey, fuck you. But if you do this, you have to say simultaneously, hey, you have to say it, hey, because it comes out together. It's pulling it out of the vocal cords. And it's just there's a time and place for all of these. I will say you can do this in the car. I wouldn't suggest it. I want people to see your whole chest move forward. This is reserved for in the car while you're driving, when you're looking at someone. Keep your, you got to stay strapped at all times. And this is how you can stay strapped. It's here. It's this, it's an index finger. It's a middle finger. It's a ring finger. I'm saying to you right now, if your thumb is involved, you don't fucking mean it. You really don't mean it if you have to put your thumb in there because it's this. Now, there are occasions when people have maybe had surgery on their hand and they're like, I do mean it. I just need a little extra help. And in that sense, it's a little bit different. Use your cheekbones. Use your cheekbones. Furrow your brow. Stick your chin out. Hey! Fuck you. Because you're so disgusted. How could somebody not hug the curb when they're driving? Why would you drive along and pace me? Uh -huh, I'm pacing you. Don't do that. Either up or back. One or the other. Stop that. Hey, you know why I'm mad. You too. But don't do this. Come on. That's this is a this is an elementary school flip off. That's that's when you're you haven't really developed all your muscles and your bones. You gotta do that because you gotta support that. But when you're that bitch, you flip them off like that. And get an and have a nail. You know what? I suggest a lot of people used to do a coke nail. That was a thing. Some people still do. I say a middle fingernail is the new Coke nail. And you know what? If you want to really go there, put a ring on there. Do that. Give them that one. They know you mean fucking business. When you look at somebody just like that, say, hey. And you can whisper it too. Hey. Fuck you, bitch. I wish my fucking finger was this long. I wish I could just go like this. Hey, fuck you. Look at that. Fuck you. Hey, fuck you. Pff, fuck you. There's so many ways, you know? Because sometimes you're at different levels of annoyance or anger, right? So you can go, oh, fuck you. What? Oh, man. Fuck you. Oh, well, fuck you. Oh, fuck me. There's so many. You don't even have to use your hands. But if you do, it's I'm telling you, it's this one. It's this one right here that really lets people know that they have entered a new phase, a new realm. And this is going to welcome them into fucking around and finding out. I have full coverage insurance, but I don't want to fuck up my car, but I want people to know when I'm driving these behaviors. I'm taking note of that. I'm taking note of that.
And this is your this is your this is your warning. This is like when you get your name written on the chalkboard and then eventually it'll get erased. It's this one. Uh, your name's on the list. Hey, your name's on the list. You, your name's on the list. And that's what that means. Listen, it is da- listen, it is dangerous to flip people off and people will chase you down. But listen, I've had people chase me down and I pull right up into the police department and I say, try it. Do something. I didn't break any fucking law. You looked at me ugly. I'll flip you off. How about that? You cut me off ugly. I'll flip you off. That's not against the law. Yeah, there are crazy people out there. But my God, I walk out of my house every day a fully flaming homosexual. A homosexualidad. I walk out. I'm not afraid of flipping somebody off. If you are really that worried about it, I would say. Mind your P's and Q's. Don't flip people off. I know it's immature. I get all of that. It is probably a dangerous practice. But guess what? I told you before, I'm out here in these streets. You know what? People, I probably do worse things that people would kill me for. I probably do worse things. Like, I don't know, being a homosexual, being a drag queen, driving around with rhinestone and sequin gowns hanging in the back seat of my car and going to a drive through Like, People that want to fuck me up are going to fuck me up for that. Probably not for flipping them off. Well, I don't know. Maybe there are places I wouldn't flip somebody off. Hey, you want to see me take a break? Because I think you want to see me take a break. What about this? Hey. Do you want to see me take a break? I think you want to see me take a break. <laughs> want to see me take a break? Look, let's just let's take a break. We need we're going to we're going to be taking a break. We're going to be taking a break. I want to give a shout out to my friend from beauty school. I went to Cerritos Cosmetology Beauty School and graduated in 1995. I think it was 95. Was it 95? Was it 96? Anyway, my friend Jessica Regosa went to school with me there and she used to wear this lipstick from La Femme called Icy Champagne Beige. And she would outline with like a chestnut liner and fade it in. And it was my favorite thing ever, ever, ever. And she was my hair model. And I think about her from time to time. And I found a tube of this and I was like, they still fucking make it. She worked at Helen's Beauty Supply in Whitwood Mall. If you ever went there, you knew her. Diagonal Ford Red Bob. Gorgeous. Jessica Raigosa. I'm wearing your lipstick, bitch. Nightlife. Fashion, music, one-woman shows, bar mitzvahs, politics. She co-created Wigstock, a true legend. If you can stand the word legend, we're absolutely thrilled she could be here with us today. It's the one and only Lady Bunny. Daddy, how are you? I'm so excited you're here. Wait, did you include in my bio bar mitzvahs? Haven't you? I have. I have DJed it. I think it was a bot mitzvah. And What's the difference? I think one's for girls and one's for boys. So, um... Anyway, it was kind of thinking about the drag queen story hour stuff. It's like, I like dirty stuff and I like to perform dirty stuff in my act that's not meant for kids. And I'll put on the ticket link. I don't want the brats. If, if you if you don't like, you know, sick humor, don't come. But when they DJ, see, that's a way for me to get booked right. without my nasty act. Right. And I take requests. And one of their requests, I did not know to buy the... Um, the PG version and had the explicit version and it was Akon, I want to love you. And so it was their big request. <laughs> the guy goes on to the bat mitzvah dance floor that's empty except for him and his daughter in their special moment to their f- special song. And the song starts off Akon singing, I want to fuck you, fuck you, you already know. And I was sort of like sinking back Mortified. behind the DJ booth. Mor- I was like, well- did you I really feel bad? I started this whole groomer thing. You started it. Yeah, okay, boomer is now okay, groomer. I started it. You started it. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, 
I didn't want it to go this public. So right, but it, it was going to happen. It was going to happen. <laughs> um, I My first opportunity to meet you was uh, when we did Drag You a long time ago. Yes. Back when it used to film in like downtown LA. Yes. And um, I remember I was there just working on the show, um, kind of like running around behind Matthew, like pick up this, pick up that. But I just was glued to figure out what, how are these wigs even possible? And I remember somebody was like, did you see what's in Bunny's wig? And I was like, no, what's in it? And they're like, you're not going to see either because it's a trick. And it's really, it really is a thing. I think it's something that it's a, there's secrets that really not everybody needs to know. You find out kind of on your own how right. to do stuff like that. And that's the magic of right. it. Have you always, like, how? when did the hair start getting to where it is now? So, I don't know if people remember Chris March from Project Runway, the heavy set guy, very fun queen from San Francisco who passed away a few years. But I went to the opening of Wigstock the movie in San Francisco, and Chris was there in a Wonder Woman. Yes, wig I remember the look. That was literally this big, and it was so smooth. And you see, I like big wigs, but I'm not good at the teasing, and so I tend to stack. Wigs. I can't style wigs, but tend so that they can look smoother. Now, if you could really, the, sometimes the best hairdressers are from down south because if you're in sure. Louisiana or Florida, you got to make five old woman's hairs into a bouffant yeah. that's mauve colored, you know. And so uh, I, 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 I end up stacking them, and they are heavy. But um, listen. If you can get away with a little short pussycat wig, Monet Exchange, and she can't, but she does, uh, then then wear it. But, yeah. you know, I'm a big girl and I got to get my proportions right, you know? And that that's, those are the proportions. Yeah. <laughs> I've always, my also my first image of you was in the book. Uh, it was like a pink square book that just said drag. And I remember seeing a picture of you eating a carrot. And I yes. was like, I was so enamored, so fascinated because I, I'd never, drag was so new to me. I didn't know. I always thought people just put on a wig from the thrift store. You know what I mean? But Oh, I did it, that too. Well, sometimes <laughs> They we were typically did. gray. And uh -huh. I would imagine that their previous owners had passed away from <laughs> something. <laughs> but that was my first, you know. Right. Seeing that, and 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 that that like, oh, uh, 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 and you could see the inspiration from Barbara Eden, mm -hmm. and from all of the blonde bombshells. And I'm sure you're inspired by other people as well, not just blondes. Yes, I do like Barbara Eden. I do love. I mean, I I, I love Charo. Mm -hmm. uh, you gotta love Charo. Working with her on uh, drag, you, she made a video for me that said, "Lady Bonnie is the biggest." Puta in the world. <laughs> and that's the gem of my press kit. Charo right. called me a whore. Right. So. 100%. You really feel your work has gotten out there. Yeah. When even Charo knows that, knows that you are a, a skank. Knows that you're a whore. Yeah. And as we said off camera, these are not wigs that you would wear for your in calls at all. No. 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 But I now when I did my in calls uh, mm -hmm. on the T for M thing on uh -huh. Craigslist, do you recall that? Of course. I would still do the Lady Bunny look. Uh -huh. I would still wear upper and lower lashes Perfect. and large, you know, blonde wigs because I didn't have any pictures of me and like, ooh, a hint of mascara and my own, you know, hair. Well, you weren't catfishing anyone, so there's that. They were getting what they were getting. <laughs> That's true. I mean, right. the pictures might have been a little old. I mean... When when it when it's 2015 and the twin towers are in the background of your phone and you're eating the <laughs> carrot, <laughs> so I mean there's a little room for interpretation, Fine. but yeah, Fine. no, I would literally open the door from my tricks as trolley part and and you uh -huh. know just get everything the lucite. I mean because there's not there's, I don't I don't do another drag right. Well, but but people like that. Men men are attracted to the extra glamour. Like they they stipulate, I want you to have real tits, and it's like, 
I feel maybe kind of like you do. I have real tears. <laughs> right. They're in my armpit, though, so I don't know if that's really what you wanted. Honey, we have back rolls, front rolls, right. side rolls, Pick. <laughs> neck rolls. We can put the bra wherever you want. It's totally fine. You know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of the, the fans of, of drag race, because I, 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 I always seem to separate. There's people that are fans of drag and there's people that are fans of drag race, which is fine. And um, one has standards and one does. No. <laughs> But a lot, but a lot of the quote unquote kids will know you from Drag Race because you appear so frequently on Drag Race, um, and they don't realize that you do have a long, uh, uh, long standing friendship and and relationship with RuPaul. How mm. how far back does that go? Uh, we met in I guess it would be eighty one. Oh, wow. Okay. In Atlanta, uh-huh. and. Um, so yeah, very long relationship with that whore. <laughs> so sometimes she'll read me on the show and say stuff like, um, you know, Lady Bunny's prolapse, or you know, Lady Bunny's uh, is like Sunday school. She has no class or whatever. And people were like, oh, "Who Rue read you on the show?" I'm like. <sighs> Don't you understand right. that, that kind of sets up a good situation? It's not bad to be mentioned on a very popular international drag right. show. And then that gives me the liberty to read her, too. Yeah. So when you are on the show, what like what do you think the logic is of when when they decide, like, hey, Bunny, we want you to come in for this kind of a project? Um, I don't think there's any logic. No. <laughs> to that show, no. <laughs> I don't think there's any logic to my career. I don't think there... Well, I mean, I don't know. When they had me on that roast, Uh um, it was uh, funny because people had dug up an old quote that I had apparently said to Rue where I said, I'll appear on Drag Race, uh, you know, on my... What's the expression? I'm blanking out. Um, Over my own dead body. Over my dead body, Uh uh-huh. And then Rue came up with that coffin idea and said, I have a... (laughs) I got you, girl. You come on in a coffin. You know, the funny thing about that, though, is that my mother and my black friends did not like seeing the coffin thing. Like, they have a different relationship with death that it's not ha-ha. Right, right. It is. It is different for some people. I mean, I mean, I get. I think because you're always in on the joke. That's the thing with with you. I think that so many people have respect for is that you're one of these people that. the, there's a joke, but there's always a joke coming back on yourself. Yeah. You find humor in everything. Is it just as easy to do now? I mean, I follow you on Instagram. A lot of people do. I find, um, you know, I'm con- technically Generation X. And so uh, when I see what's happening now with with all of the different things, I, I try to figure out where do you fit in here? And it's a tough pill to swallow when you realize that everything that's happening politically um you know, we hear just just vote and everything's fine. But you vote and then what? You can't just walk away and say, I'm going to vote. I'm going to change my avatar to this kind of flag. I'm going to drink almond milk and I'm doing my part. Well, I, I, I you're, you're, you're right about the just vote part because um, there's a line. I don't know if who said this, but it's a famous quote that said, uh, they are never going to give you the power to vote them out. The ruling right. class is not going to give. Right. And what what my issue is as a former, you know, lifelong Democrat from a family of Democrats, that meant a lot to me because being in the South, where not all white people are Democrats, um, you know, I took pride in being less fundamentalist, less um, uh, likely to own a gun. Uh, less likely to advocate public transportation, I mean, more likely to advocate pu- public transportation, you know, racial equality, you know, women's lib, all that kind of stuff. And and the, the people around us were more fundamentalist and in my way of looking at things more backward. If you talk to people in Europe, they do not believe the shit that we go through. Like you pay every month for, you know, the premium. And then when you get sick, they don't always cover. Right. The majority of it. Sure. So Obamacare was a small step in the right direction. It covered pre-existing conditions. You know, before that, you know, it would would be hard to get insurance if you had something like AIDS or cancer or something. You would need to already have you know, insurance. But even after Obamacare, 
uh, medical bankruptcy is the number one cause of bankruptcy. Right. So whether you can look at it from the viewpoint of I'm a Christian, well, what did Jesus do? <laughs> Healed the sick. Should those, I think we should separate church and state, but I think we should help people. And I think we should want to have a healthy population. Right. And, you know, um, also I think that that healthcare costs are so high, even after Obamacare, that, you know, I could have a lot, I work a lot. I could have a lot more money to save for my <laughs> upcoming <laughs> retirement. Oh my God, let's take a break. <laughs> let's take a break. <laughs> And we are back with the gorgeous, 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 brilliant Lady Bunny. Why a bunny? Where does where does Lady Bunny come from? You know, I don't really know, but a lot of drag queens down south call themselves Lady. Uh huh. You know that from the drag world. It's not yeah. just down south. Yeah. Like Lady Chablis from Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, mm -hmm. and it was just kind of like a like a a, a way to seem fancy because. A lot of drag queens, you know, um, we're not working under the most glamorous, you know, conditions. And uh, right. you're in a shitty dressing room and you're doing that same number because it earns the tips. And you got to earn those tips to get that gown for the pageant that will enable you to make more base pay as right. Miss Raining such and such. Um, I don't even remember what you asked me. I'm ranting on about nothing. Just the bunny. Oh, bunny. Uh, well, the, I was asking you about the lady. I was trying to explain about the lady. So in my case, you know, th 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 there was nothing fancy about my early drag. <laughs> nothing fancy about my current drag. But um, the so I, I, I just thought that was silly for me to use it. But bunny, you know, on Gomer Pyle, an old TV show, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the girlfriend of Sergeant, Sergeant Carter, was named Bunny. And so that probably was the first place that I heard it. But there was also a cartoon, uh, uh, like a, it was, I think it was Marvel, Bunny, Queen of the In Crowd. And she was a model that was very psychedelic. Uh -huh. And then there was a mean one who had her exact same face. This was drawn by the same person that did the Archie uh -huh. and Betty. Yeah. Uh, so okay. it was same face, different. It, so Chili was the mean model that would always be, f you know, trying to fuck, um, uh, bunny, Queen of the In Crowd, up. Uh -huh. And I collected those. My mother would love for me to throw them out, but I have not. But you collected them. Yeah. Um, Similar look with the minis yeah. and the bold prints. My One of my favorite things you do is when you, like, during a show when you'll tell a joke and then you'll do, like, a dance break in between. <laughs> what do you call that specific type of dance? Because <laughs> it's a style. No, it's a thing. It's a thing. Well, it was modeled after laughing, which is from the 1960s, late 60s. So, uh, you know, I had a tr I was doing something on HBO called Drag Time, which was like a drag documentary. Totally remember long it. Long ago, Varla. My favorite Charles thing Bush. to watch. Yeah. So um, it's, it's just like a late 60s boogie. But um, mm -hmm. I like it because it's good for low attention span, which are lower, lower than ever now. It's like if you're at a club and you're drunk. Oh, now she's not dancing. So listen. Sure, sure. <laughs> listen to the joke. And oh, now that fool told the joke and is laughing and uh, dancing again. So it just kind of it kind of kind of gives it to you uh -huh. in a format that I easy to for clubs. Would you ever uh, <laughs> be on like from your own choice, yeah. uh, be on the judging panel of RuPaul's Drag Race as a permanent judge? Um, well, I mean... Because you know everyone, everyone, I mean, and this is, a, whether it's ruffles feathers or not, everyone says it would be really, really nice for the queen's to be mentored and judged by people that they admire and okay. people who have done it before and people who have picked up sweaty dollar bills and people who have known the heartbreak of thinking you're really doing something great and you're just not doing it. You know what I mean? Like people who've known it and who've come uh, uh, overcome that and said, I know what you're going through. I really know. Not I'm here promoting a movie. Well, um, I think that in order to to think that way, you've got to s ask 
is Drag Race actually mentoring people, mm -hmm. or is that a uh, <laughs> something that Rue <laughs> and World of Wonder have sure. want you I to agree. believe? I agree. You know, and and yeah. and I'm not sure that that really is the purpose of the show. Do you think it ever could have been? Um, I don't watch. You know, much, but I, I, I like the drag queens who I like the drag fans who check out the queens and what they do on stage apart from the show because right. that's how I judge drag queen. Soju or Shoju, I'm sorry you had a cyst that made you not be able to walk. Nina West, I'm sorry you were bullied. You know, um, you know, this and that and this and that. But it, it it kind of reminds me of like, would you ever go to a drag club and say, please welcome to the stage a phenomenal entertainer. She has a cyst on her ass, which makes it difficult to walk. She was bullied in high school. She is HIV positive. She was arrested for this and that. So give her a warm, warm run because that's just not what happens in, in real life. Yeah. And you know, it's, 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 uh, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting journey. I mean, I definitely think that like, you know, when we say like the best entertainers around and I, I, I do think while the, while whoever wins the show is usually the standout, they mm -hmm. usually are really great at what they do. Um, it's the show is about the best of the 13 people who were on stage, not the best overall in the country happening at this time. I think it's definitely that, but it's definitely, I mean, I am glued to drag race, no matter whether I've been worked on the show behind the camera or in front of the camera, I still love watching it because I love watching other drag queens. Yeah. I definitely am more interested in the all-star storyline just because I feel like I have like a pony in the race when I watch. Because I've met some of the people. I don't yeah. know them all. Yeah. But it's I feel like more interesting because it's kind of whittled down in that way. But I think a lot of people think like, oh, I would love to see Bunny uh, tell these girls, all right, let me tell you what's funny and what's not funny. Yeah. You know, or... Well, I mean, I think that also brings into question, um, do drag queens want to run around and mentor? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's some people that have made a lot of money, you know, acting as if they do. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's necessarily the case. Yes, there's drag mothers who take a certain person under their wing and possibly give them their name, mm -hmm. Davenport, Montrees, or, you know, whatever. But I don't think that drag queens are going around looking for people to, you know, mentor. And I would much rather see those queens on TV doing what they do in a club because we never get to see that. And mm -hmm. in fact, Drag Race downplays the performance. You only lip sync, which is not even what, you know, um, all queens do. Right. Bianca doesn't really, you know, known as a, a, a lip sync. You know, Jinx, Jinx is not really a, a great, you know, lip sync or, or, or whatever. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, 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 I don't really think that I don't think that the mentoring, you know, the mentoring doesn't always make sense to me because why would you book someone who needed mentoring? Mm -hmm. You would book a, a polished performer who could deliver on stage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you would not book, although I guess anyone can get assist, someone who's the most interesting thing, you know, uh, it, it, that people remember is that she had a cyst, you know. Have you ever had a cyst? I have had a cyst, but I, I just, I'm, I'm, you know, in a club, would you introduce them and say, "Oh, right. be kind," you know? She's not going to be, she's going to be walking with a limp because there's this big boil that's leaking, you know, right next to her hemorrhoids. I mean, it's just, <laughs> and I kind of see this as a continuation of a time in the 90s, 2000, where effeminate gay men um, were welcomed on TV uh, to help a bride pick a dress. Yeah, it was on a journey. Yeah. But it's this idea that, that gay people have tips that can help, you know, re <laughs> re real women. And I'm kind of like, you know, even in, in interviews during Drag U, I'd say, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we do have tips mm -hmm. because if you have a big shoulder or a big face, you might end up wearing a big wig. And so we have to, or if you wear a pink t-shirt as a gay man to school, then you realize that the effect of that is you getting your ass beat. Right. So don't just take the tips. If you value us for our tips, value us when we can't get married, can't, you know, you, trans people can't get hormones, mm -hmm. you know, uh, value us when we're going through struggles. We're not just here for tips, but that's been a, a way that mainstream has accepted us. And I think that we're way more than that. Right. It's almost like, uh, it's, it's almost, it's, it, it, it's a superficial, you know, look at what we are and why we're able to do those things. In the meantime, are we seeing magic drag right. performances? Right. Girl, are right. we seeing the, uh, who is Elizabeth Brooks, Chevelle Brooks uh -huh. up there? I mean, this no. is like, are we seeing, no. you know, when, when they booked Kennedy Davenport uh, to come on All Stars as a lip sync assassin, you give her a slow country number? Right. What What are you doing? Yeah, you give, don't give the ballad to the, yeah. Yeah. Now, I thought when I watched season 15, I um, I was stoned and I was in Hawaii. And um, where I'm always stoned. And Are you always stoned? In Hawaii? Just in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> Why just Hawaii? Well, because my friend has bakes ridiculous cookies okay. and okay. Uh, so I watched the the first episode of oh. season fifteen. Is that the most recent one? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not not, not all stars, and, and so it was like. I loved getting to know the girls and you know, a lot of them were talking trash. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, honestly, I don't know how I mean, it's pretty basic to go on a show like that where the same exact words have been uttered and say, I'm here to slay. Oh, I mean, I, I don't even know oh, how the fans of the show cannot just like reject that or the producers. Can't they say, you know, <laughs> Can you just say, I'm going to fucking slay the house down boots and then shove a table over? Right. You know, because it's just like, it's so, and so then, then I, I was really getting into the interviews and I loved them, them talking, you know, like reading each other or, you know, you know, whatever. And it really made me have an appetite. Oh, don't be shocked. Um, an appetite for, I said, I want to, okay, these girls are talking trash. I want to see what they can do, Mistress Isabel. I want to see, you know, what you what you can do. And then as soon as this, the, the competition started, I was like, I could care less. That first, um, the first uh, number that they got Robin Fierce, who I thought was pretty, you know, the, the, she comes out and she's lip syncing something and you're seeing the back of her wig and it's hard to even tell in the one minute talent number that they've given her what she is even doing mm -hmm. is she lip syncing and then it turns out the song is now that we found love what are we gonna do with it and i'm like what's happening here is this a is this a, a clearance you know, yeah. rice thing because she she tried to really throw herself into the dancing you know, thing. But this is a male vocal. There's no drag queen on earth that thinks, oh, I'm cut. I spent all my money on wardrobe to compete on the number one world's drag. Let me bust out the heavy D in the boys. Mm -hmm. That's just not that's not what what there is no drag queen that wants to do that. number. <laughs> I like the song, but it's a male vocal. So when I see stuff like drag queens lip syncing to Luther Vandross on there, I'm like, yeah, that what, was what is that? I don't, I don't understand that. That was odd. Don't go to, <laughs> don't go to Ozma's show because she'll, she'll pull out some of those boy band songs. Oh, well, I wasn't going to go to her show anyway. <laughs> you heard it here, Ozma. <laughs> Bunny was not going to go to your show. Why should I be any different from anyone else? <laughs> oh, fuck. So get your change out. Get your change out. Throw it at the stage. Uh, let's take a break. We are back with the one and only Lady Bunny. Um, this is the part of the podcast that we call Read Me Delta. Read Me Delta! We open letters from listeners and... Um, I have no idea what these letters have to say, but um, 
because I don't get to see them beforehand. <laughs> Mark gets to, Mark. I don't have my letter opener. <gasps> oh, oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to. You need to strike. I think we do. <laughs> I'm gonna have to use the lip. Br- I have to use my lip brush sometimes. Mark, that was a You really... mean this has happened before? It has happened <gasps> before, and I still come back to work. Oh, my God. I know. Remember what we you... just said? Compensation facilitation. Yes. They don't know the difference. <laughs> and here we are. And Lady Bunny's here, by the way. I was going to have a nice letter opener so I could impress Lady Bunny with something. She already... I'm already on her shit list anyway, so it's fine. Dear Delta, how do you feel about the toilet seat covers offered in public restrooms? Why do they block the toilet bowl with a huge piece of paper? Why is the center not better perforated so that it does not literally prevent my shit from dropping into the toilet? Every time I attempt to use one, I end up ripping the entire cover or I feel like I have too much of the toilet bowl covered with paper to the point that I'm concerned my shit is in fact getting on the cover. Are public toilet seat covers very Delta? Are they very Lady Bunny? I would like input on this from... Uh, from you more than anyone I've ever known. Love the show. Love you. Love the mom network. Very Ben. Um, I try not to shit in public. I try not to. But I always carry a shoulder bag, like a like a messenger bag kind of, but a smallish one. And I keep my own wipes with me because I never know where I'm going to end up. And I don't know if, if you've ever heard this story before, but I've shit myself in a restaurant before and had to walk out in front of everybody. So I'm... I, this is I'm not oh, afraid. Wait. Yeah. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking, Delta. That's really As I was walking, it was sliding down my leg. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, and I was passing were you the in a ice. Mini skirt? I oh. was in a buffet of all places, oh. which makes it even better. You were where? In a buffet. Oh. Um, so, you know, I, I like to be prepared for this. And I think, Ben, if you watch the podcast, you know, I am always prepared. I. Everywhere I drive in Southern California, I know where the restrooms are because, listen, I'm a, I'm a person of a certain age and not everything that goes in comes out exactly the same way. You know what I'm saying? Um, so <laughs> am I afraid of uh, shitting in a public uh, restroom? No, I'm not afraid of it, um, but I don't like to do it. Uh, and if I do... Those toilet seat covers, I put like three or four of them. Now, I try to hover, but I also don't have any balance. Plus, I need cataract surgery. So I'm probably going to end up falling over. You know what I'm saying? So inevitably, my ass will hit that bowl. You know. And maybe the poop. Well, I've been places before where the toilet (laughs) does not have like a, it doesn't, it's not sitting on ceramic. It's just extended. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think to myself, what if I snap this thing out of the fucking wall? It's happened, I'm sure, to someone before. They have Why to have a wait limit. <laughs> they, ha- <laughs> <laughs> they have a wait limit on a toilet, I would imagine. I've never, I've never done it. I, I will say one time I looked at it and I could see it was like the caulking around it looked like it was so I definitely hovered. What about you? Have you taken a shit in public before? Just now. Just now. Yeah. Here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, Very well, relaxing. I mean, look at the furniture. Um yeah, well, of course, of course, I have. I mean, in a I mean, like listen, an airport. At my age, when you take fiber, when it's ready to come out, you feel lucky. You're not going to be. But yeah, obviously, some public toilets are gross. But what I didn't understand about the letter was that he said he pulls the cover over, but are but but he's saying that it's not allowing the poop to. It hits the cover. I think I, I don't his, know how that's, well, that cover's not working right. Um, basically, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Um, I. I, I think you might be also thinking, uh, Ben, very delicately of yourself if you think that whatever you is leaving your body is so light and fairyish that it's not going to tear a piece of tissue paper. I think you take <laughs> huge shits just like everyone well, else. Well, maybe, maybe Ben should eat more. More fiber. Just more. Do you oh, eat or until just you more shit. in general? You can save on fiber. Yeah. Just eat what until you, you shit. What do you like to eat, eat in an airport? Because you, you had to fly here. If you um, had to eat in an airport, what do you like to eat? Uh, I like pink berry if they have it. Oh, yogurt. Do, you know, the one that I love is, is Lemonade, that franchise that was at LAX that closed. Uh huh. You know that place? I, pink berry. No, Lemonade. Oh, this place is just called Lemonade. Yeah. I heard of it. Yeah. It's great. And it's a yogurt place. No, it's a, it's it's like, you know, a la carte items, but okay. you get a lot of 
vegetables. I like to eat a lot, but I do like to eat healthy food sometimes. <laughs> On the road, you can't always yeah. tell. But um, when they come around with the snack basket and they say, would you like to pick a snack? What are you going to pick? Mm, Generally. Chips, chips or nuts, usually. Nuts. Why are there so few nuts in a bag? You know what I mean? Come on. Uh, I know. It's like, okay, you're done. Well, I'm always thinking that the airlines get those things for free because they're promoting it to people who are well enough off to fly mm -hmm. and well enough off to buy their nuts. <laughs> <laughs> buy their own nuts? Yeah. Well, I've always said, like, when I get into an airport, I suddenly I have no budget. I have no, I'm not concerned about anything. Right. Oh, I need this and I need this and I need that. And it's like, right. that's a hundred dollars. Yeah. You're not rich. Why are you well, spending a hundred dollars? Like it, coming from England, you have to walk through the, the, the customs shopping uh -huh. in order to get to the gates, which is really hateful, but that's what they do. That's they know they, they got you there for hours. So This next letter is from Sandy uh, and it's to both of us. What are your favorite kind of flowers? That's a nice question. Do you have a favorite kind of flower? I mean, I'm sure you love flowers because you I like hyacinth. Hyacinth is beautiful. Yeah. Hyacinth. I sent my mom those for Mother's Day. Really? Yeah. Um, do you keep any like live plants in your in your home? Oh no. 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 I'm gone too much. Would do you ever put flowers in, in your hair or is that just too much added weight or not really your thing? Well, I used to occasionally do that, but it's like, it seems to be a real, like Rue always has a hair ornament mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I, I don't have anything against a hair ornament, but I, I just see a lot of people doing that. Well, and also certain hairstyles. So like this hairstyle doesn't call for that because there's already like sort of an, architecture an focal, happening. A po point. Yeah. 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 No, I, I like it. You know, I'm colorblind, so I never know what, what goes are you really yeah, colorblind, I'm, or are you I'm, just I'm, saying that? No, I have red green. Uh, okay, color blindness, so it's like I can usually tell most stuff, but I know the sky is red and the grass is green. Right. I mean blue. Well, it's greener on the other side. I don't know about this <laughs> yes. side, but that's what they say. So, but I, I I do shock people. Everybody out there is like, ah, oh, it's colorblind. <laughs> that explains all of those times when I was like. The earrings don't go with the eyeshadow. It all or, goes. Know, whatever. It all goes. Um, hyacinth is your favorite. My favorite, I really like, I like roses. I like white roses a lot. Mm -hmm. um, my mother lives, uh, we live together. We just. I just got a house. And so um, we're trying to keep an area for her to do gardening, right? Because the place is like what you call zero-scaped, which basically means there's no greenery at all. Okay. It's like... That Palm Springsy kind of like Palisade Rock and that oh, kind of okay. thing, which I don't prefer at right. all. I right. would much rather have like lots of greenery. Um, but she used to not like white flowers because she said they just looked up like wadded up toilet paper. Uh -huh. But I really love white flowers, so I'm trying to like make that happen and introduce. I don't. I'm not. I have no green thumb. My mother does. I have no green thumb. So um, well, I told my mother I was going to visit her. I am visiting her in, in a couple of weeks. Uh -huh. And I know y'all are all like, oh, shock, Bunny's mother is still alive. <laughs> Nobody Father too. But no. my mother will not. My mother, well, she's 87. Uh, sh sh I told her I was going to throw salt all over the yard to kill all the plants because she'll throw her back out gardening because well, i'm from farmer folk uh -huh. and i'm not i didn't get that gene my sister parents grandparents uh -huh. what state do does your does tennessee your chattanooga tennessee. tennessee okay yeah okay and, and I, uh, I went down there in october to perform for the first time ever First time ever there. Ever, honey. I, 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 let, I mean, I guess I was more associated with Atlanta because that's where I really sure. started doing drag. But um, uh, and then right after that, Tennessee started with that drag band. <laughs> Couldn't have had anything to do with my performance. Could it? This flew by really, really <laughs> fast today. I didn't expect it to fly by this fast. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Super, super Delta. fun. I'm a fan. Thank you. And you know what? I just want to say congrats on the podcast. Thank you. And I also want to say that 
you know, I'm glad that you could do your own thing and avoid that irritating, tall, thin moron that thinks it knows everything about fashion. Raja. Not Raja, RuPaul. <laughs> I'm glad to see you come into your own. I love that. Thank you for listening and watching Very Delta. And a hello to everyone on YouTube. Please subscribe to Mom Podcast so you don't miss an episode. Also search for Very Delta on your podcast apps, where we come out every Monday, as well as here on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe to the Mom Plus of your choice for even more Very Delta. You can send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com, and you can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. Where can people follow you? Official underscore lady underscore bunny on Instagram. And then do you do X or what is it called X now or Twitter? <laughs> I do at Lady Bunny 77 on Twitter. I love Twitter. Yeah. Why do they call it X? Because Elon Musk is going through a midlife crisis and wants to rebrand it. What would you call it if you weren't going to call it X or Twitter? Bunny. Something that I waste far too much time on. I mean, you can still get porn there, right? You can still get porn, and I have been goofed. Again, I like dirty material, you know, and all that kind of stuff, but it, it is wild when you're in public looking through your Twitter and then a giant dong uh -huh. pops up on the screen, and it's your mom's. No, no just kidding. And then you're arrested at the airport. <laughs> right. And you realize that you are a grouper. <laughs> You're just sitting on the airplane, like airdropping all of that to everyone. I don't even know how to do airdrop, by the way, but maybe you do. I don't, I don't. I actually do. You do. I don't know how to do it. I'm like, I'm still trying. I really was trying to bring a CD to a club the other day because I, it's the only place I could find the song, the mix that I had. It's yeah. like a Toadie Fields mix, and I keep it. I've seen you perform that. Heart, I, I hang on to it because I feel like somebody's going to get it and break it apart and use the, like little sound bites here and there. And I'm like, somebody gave that to me on a CD. I don't want to let it go. Well, you can buy a, a CD burner for twenty nine ninety nine and upload it into the same way that you would burn a tra tracks that are already on your computer. You buy a twenty nine ninety nine CD player. Mm -hmm. You upload that. You 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 insert the CD, close it. <laughs> when you got me doing your tech help, you're really bad. This is a problem. And then you, then you upload it. It's really really easy. I just did it because a lot of uh, you know a DJ and um, a lot of songs have a protected right. file, so you actually have to burn them onto a disc and re-import them. Thanks, Apple. Yeah. It's a lot of bullshit. So it's like you bought the music, but you actually can't, you know, use you can't do it. And I, I, I'll, it'll be, I'll be at someone's wedding where I've taken all their requests. That we want this song. And you know, when we do the, the the couples dance and blah, 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 they're, they're like coming over to me. And I'm like, uh, I bought it. And then you have but the raw version play. of the song. Yeah. The or, or that one. Yeah. The Akon. So. <laughs> you can also follow the show on Instagram and TikTok at Very Delta because if you're not, you're really only getting 50% of the Delta. Join me next week right here. And until then, make sure you keep things Very Delta. This episode of Very Delta was brought to you by Orange Diamond, the official emoji of the Very Delta show. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margo Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. 